Hello, so in this one is a physical quick slash warrior shadow build and I'm starting it with a test for warrior shadow on one hand of sword because there is a problem. It's been known from season 4 but I didn't thought it's gonna be so bad on quick slash. What happens is that you don't do all the hits. So at 5 attack speed I should be doing 300 and sometimes I only do 150, sometimes I'm doing 190 and it has nothing to do with hit rate because it's level 1 Scarecrow. My hit rate is 100%, my critical is 100%. The reason I'm looking at critical is if you're losing, if you're looking at strike count, it also shows uh, bleed and we don't want to see bleed because bleed can't crit. So only looking at the critical and with a two-handed sword, most of the time you are doing all the hits and that's a big difference. I absolutely forgot about it. It was known from season 4. But in season 4, the biggest problem was with Axe and not with one-handers in general. But Quick Slash, for some reason, is affected also on a one-hander. So basically, just play two-hander and Blast Snaps is gonna be much easier with more weapon range. At the same time, I did this... Uh, I did 160 Serpents on uh, one-hander before I actually even tested this. It's not a bad build. I would say it's like B tier. I wouldn't put it any above because the main idea was it was buffed and at the same time there was a new quiver called Primal Synchronization that gives you damage per remaining chain and also chain count but it looks like it doesn't work on Lacrima. It's a, a little bit of a letdown but if you're looking for something new this is a good choice. It was actually buffed a little bit in Season 5. It got a little bit bigger tooltip, but nothing too crazy. So yeah, let's get into the build. For early skill board, you want it to look something like this. So on the quick slash, confidence, additional physical damage, fine weakness, quick attack. And then I highly suggest to pick up chain, because this is going to stay for, with you for a long time. And then warrior shadow. Warrior Shadow is actually the biggest priority, because this is where most of our damage is going to come from. If you don't want to use something like Fine Weakness, you can use also Savagery if you need a little bit more weapon range, or Iron Will if you have a lot of HP. For Attack Seal, I'm using um, Condensed Destruction. You can also use Critical Chance, but I love Physical Damage more. For Defense Seal, I'm using Dodge. You can use Armor, Chaos Resist, or Elemental Resistances, whatever you need the most of the time. For a toggle, I'm using Illusion Axe with Extract Energy to extract some Earth Energies for Attack Damage Multiplier, together with Low Armor. Low Armor is basically a single target damage increase because it applies the debuff. For Attack Enhance, I'm using Fighter's Rot with Enhance Effect, Increase Duration, Time Acceleration. I'm also using Decrease Duration, but Decrease Duration is a little bit late into the game. When you have a little bit more duration on your Fighter's Rot, otherwise it's going to be a damage loss. For Defense Enhance, I'm using Bulwark of Protection. This is really nice because those ancient monsters are hitting you for a lot and you can always press this before you start purifying them. For Shadow, Pro Shadow Provocation, I'm just using it for mostly for ammo amp. I'm not really looking that much on the damage multiplier. Together with Lingering Shout, Hushet Shout, Increased Duration, Enhance Effect, Shout of Power, I can also use Quick Shout and Buff Activation and Hit, so I wouldn't need to press it myself. Shadow of Justice is just to remove the CC with buff activation upon crowd control, so I wouldn't need to use it myself. For movement, I'm using shield charge and roll with his arm. Some of the things are not linking on the board because uh, I don't have any resources to waste right now. It's my hardcore character, I'm kinda low on the resources, but shield charge, roll should link with his arm. If you are not using shield, you can use bench slash or leap attack. Those also work really good. For Zodiacs, it's pretty simple. We start with Afros into Forest, into Jewel, Root for status effect. This is important one. Muckle Strength. This is important one, Elaborate Attack, because it's a flat multiplier. Of course, into Sweep for weapon range. This is if you're using shield, this is really nice. A lot of defense and a lot of damage. If you're not using shield, you can spend these points into here 
and just become more damage jump when you if you're using a two-hander at the same time this is pretty good more weapon range physical damage jump fighting spirits this is just to apply stun a lot of stun rate plus damage jump really five points for 10 percent amp is actually a lot after that it's just more physical damage on pharma Lightning is just to apply shock. Shock is really a nice damage increase. It's a defensive choice in here, just to remove critical damage, but amplifies damage taken by 15. It's it's a good node, it's a good node, I like it. If you're not using dodge, you can pick up dodge disable plus HP amp, which is gonna be a lot of HP. For spec itself, I'm using hammer, like this. Then rot. Damage jump plus the spirit hit. And into bonfire. Strike damage jump. And at the same time, I'm using physical reflex damage taken decrease so I wouldn't die. If you don't need physical damage decrease, you just can go into punishment, which is gonna be a decent amount of damage plus attack speed amp. So yeah, if you're not using shield, just remember not to pick up these points. And just go for some generic damage jump. You can even pick up everything in here. Intense it and hit endurance or Sensational Perfume. For charms, you don't have that many choices. I would say Hamal, Boreal, and Castor is your best choices. You can go 230 Hamal because it's a nice damage, physical damage. For Boreal, I would say 190 is enough. And then you can do Castor 230 and you should be good. For charms themselves, I don't have a good uh, examples. But this one is not a bad one. Crit Rift, Crit Damage, and on Legendary, we want Maximization Chance. So we would, ha we would do some maximized damage, but the main idea, you always want to have critical rate, critical damage, and then whatever the third affix you can pick up, hit rate is good, HP is really good, but yeah, but for the leggy prefix, you're either looking for maximization chance, or strike damage jump, or critical damage, but this is minion, but just simple critical damage is also gonna work. For relics, I suggest to start with Spica, become powerful damage as passive, and as an active pulverize with pulverize effect and cooldown recovery speed i'm not using cooldown recovery speed just because i have a artifact that gives me cooldown recovery speed but if you don't have it be sure to pick up cooldown recovery speed for the second one i'm using castor for sanctum effect makes some of the maps really easy except for chaos resistance most of the time and for the last one, Boreal, just for some HP, because the fourth relic can only be level 15. For itemization, I'm gonna show some of my crafts, but my crafts are not that necessarily good. But I'm gonna point out the main idea on what you want to focus. So, it doesn't matter, is it a one-hander or is it a two-hander? You want attack damage, physical damage, critical rate, gear critical rate, and attack damage multiplier. For... The third prefix, I'm using physical damage amplification as authority role. This is really nice one. You could use chain count, but chain count is a little bit of a bait. I would say just physical damage amp is quite a bit better. If you are not using authority role, for that prefix, you can just pick up speed and get a little bit more attack speed on your weapon. For chest, I'm using dodge chest because I'm running mixed, but if you're using armor, you can use armor. So basically, I have gear dodge rate multiplier, which is necessary, and HP multiplier. This is what you want to have early. When you start crafting authority, I would suggest enhanced skill wound duration. And for the suffix, you can choose whatever defenses, resistances that you need. At the same time, I have HP amplification from the Hamal authority. For gloves, it's really simple. This is a double authority gloves, but if you are not having any authority, you want to pick up gear armor multiplier or whatever your main defense is, attack speed. And then for the third prefix, you can pick up something like HP. For the suffix, if you are not running authority, you want critical rate, critical damage. If you are running authority, I highly suggest to pick up attack speed amplification on the suffix. And on the prefix, it's of course physical damage flat. For boots, it's really simple. I always pick up Damage multiplier, in this case it's melee damage, movement speed, 100%. You don't have to pick up gear armor multiplier, you can just pick up another authority that gives you strike damage. For the suffix, I'm always using attack enhanced skill wound effect authority. It's from Castor. For 
other rolls, most of the time, on the suffix, you want to look for some resistances. In this case, I have fire res, but you can pick up whatever you need. Helmet is the same stuff. I always focus on prefix with gear armor multi, then HP. And then I pick up some authority. In this case, it's enhanced kill room cooldown recovery speed. And for the suffix, I'm looking for defenses, for resistances. If you are running the double authority, if you want to run double authority, it's going to be a Capri authority with attack enhanced kill rune effect. I'm running unique rings, but on the rings, you basically want the same thing. You want attack speed, then multiplier on the prefix, and on the suffix, of course, it's always going to be crit rate and crit damage. For the last one, is whatever you want. You can either pick up HP for the prefix and some resistances or some stats on the suffix. For the neck, simple thing. You can run uh, physical damage flat, physical damage uh, multiplier, and then... If you want to do crafting, you can pick up skill rune cooldown recovery speed and recraft into something like skill rune effect. If you want a suffix authority, I highly suggest Capri to pick up damage amplification on uh, on hit. If you don't do that, just pick up resistances, maybe some stats if you need it. Basically, it's up to you. And on the prefix, of course, I always pick up HP. This would be everything about the itemization. If you have some unique items, running something like Medal of Penance is really nice. It gives you convert mana, so it's less of a headache. But you need to pick up some HP Absorb, otherwise you're gonna die. I'm also running Castor Ring, but everybody is running that because of the flat critical rate. It's really nice. I'm running Girth of Harmony, but it's mainly for the a lot of HP and Enhanced Skill Rune effect. But if you don't have it, and if you have some mana problems, you can just craft a belt with uh, Vespa belt, for example, with resource cost dampening. That's going to help you a lot with the mana. For the shoulders, um, most of the time I pick up Chaos Resist when my other resistances are above 100. This is a really defensive craft and I crafted this a long time ago. If you want more offensive one, you can do the one that gives you... It's Mirasetti one that gives you Totem Dodge. Totem Perfect Dodge and recraft the Totem Perfect Dodge into Skill Rune Effect on the Alchemy Bench. And of course, I always aim to roll def Gear Dodge Rate Multiplier or Armor Multiplier. Skill Board later into the game should look something like this. Quick Slash Awaken it to Source. 100% do not pick up anything else. Warrior Shadows to Source. Chain to Source. Melee Damage to Origin. If you're not gonna Awaken it to Origin, you're not gonna be able to apply. Bleed, Savagery to Origin for some melee damage jump, Fighting Spirit for Elemental Damage Shaking Dampening per stack, a really nice defensive, and Iron Will with Origin when you have 500 strength, and remember, for Iron Will to give you a full damage jump, you need around 23k HP, so keep that in mind. Most of the stuff is really similar on this board, I'm not doing anything much, there are two spots left, in here, you could pick up a Thunderbolt if you want to, if you are running the uh, shoulders. Besides that, there are not that many good choices. At the same time, I have Totem Activation upon using Enhanced Skill with Weakened Totem together with Enhanced Totem. It's a nice damage increase for the single target. After that, I'm also using Reverse Time, but I think Reverse Time is a little bit more hardcore stuff. Sometimes it helps you to survive. At the same time, it's a nice movement speed increase and a little bit of Chaos Resist. I'm using Momentum. That really helps when you start Blasting Serpents. When you start Blasting Serpents at much higher level than you should be able to. I, li I like this one. After that, there is nothing much. This was everything. GG's. See you in the next one. And I hope you guys are having some fun in Season 5. Bye-bye.